what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel today for a special interview i am as you can see not alone and like to be very honest like i really have to kind of pinch myself on this one because i really can't believe like this interview is happening because like although i have talked to like you know many people it's just kind of rare almost impossible very unicornish about how this all came about <laughs> and i'm just i like i'm kind of fanboying right now but i'm gonna contain myself but nonetheless i'm next to jonathan cherry jonathan buddy how's it going today great man i'm so i'm happy to be here i i, uh... I, I just want to say thank you just right now thank you for anything oh, else thank you <laughs> thank you my pleasure i'm as excited believe me i'm as excited as you are we were uh so I just explained, like, you were the second review uh, before all the hype and buzz that we saw, and it sort of, you're like, it was a good luck charm almost, you know? And then we had, like, like we were sitting at the, we were staying at, the whole movie was staying at the same hotel at the Soho Grand, and we're sitting in the lobby, we're all so tired from the two nights before, and this thing comes up, and we're all gathered around watching your show, talking about... The novice, which is so funny because we filmed it right before COVID, right? So it's yeah. this is like a long turnaround to get eyes on a movie. And and then a real person is talking, you know, like about our, our movie, which I didn't know what to think. Like if I'm in the Tribeca, is Tribeca gonna happen? Yeah. It's supposed to go to the Toronto Film Festival, and that was canceled, and then yeah. Yeah, and yeah. That. As he said, as he said, the novice, uh, which made his world premiere at uh, Tribeca Film Festival 2021, and it completely cleaned up all the awards, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, Jonathan plays Coach Pete, and like before I even get into questions, the first thing I was wondering, I was like, I wonder what hairstyle he's gonna come in with because you are like the man of like a thousand hairstyles. I don't think I've ever seen one two projects where you wore the same hairstyle ever. It's always a little bit of tweaking, brother. The mustache, the beard, the hair. Like you, you can go in any direction, and I th it's, yeah, it's phenomenal, yeah. you know. <laughs> I, um, yeah, that's a funny thing. I, I guess I haven't. Maybe like in, um, uh, there was one, one. there was one time I tried to repeat because I was <laughs> like, I just felt like people forgot about me. No one knows, you know. And then so in the first Goon movie. Mm -hmm. I made my hair like the Final Destination movie because I was like, I mean, maybe they'll remember me. I don't know. You know, that was my one time. Oh, I got to I got to look at that. Either way, I mean, your face was everywhere. And in, in fact, you bring up Final Destination, uh, one of the most iconic franchises in, in all of the, the horror genre, which, by the way, I still have PTSD from Final Destination 2. Like I. Hello? Uh, the yeah, log? the log. Yeah, I mean, anybody and everybody will always remember if you see a log. Like, oh, remember that movie? But yeah, like yeah. I said, Goon and um and the Final Destination franchise, and then now of recently, you're playing Coach Pete in the film The Novice, which was fantastic. Hopefully, by now, folks, you had either a chance to watch it or check out my review. This is a film you want to put on your radar to watch. It is really powerful and really eye opening, and I think this film definitely is has a really strong connectable factor to everybody and you know we'll talk about in a second what's really you know the driving uh, factor and purpose with, behind this film but there's definitely something that everybody can connect with with this fan with this film but uh, like i said yeah this year's tribeca film festival completely cleaned up all the awards you won it won the founders award for best u.s narrative featured film uh, best actress in the U.S. narrative film went to Isabel Furman and best cinematography, which this this was a no brainer for me. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is by Todd Martin. So, like, congratulations to you and the crew. I'm um, in a fantastic mm -hmm. film, and hopefully by now, now that you're back home, have you had a chance to just sit back and take it all in? Oh, so my expectations for Tribeca. I didn't. I've seen a cut of the movie, but it was a rough cut, right? So, and I liked it and I liked what I did and I knew what I saw from how hard everybody was working, that I, all the still photos of like the mist on the water and I mean, water week, like that was the first week of the shoot. If you've seen Lauren, the director, writer, director, talk about it. It was like her first movie directing 
And the first thing she does is a week on the water with like, the, it, it was just gnarly. And, but I knew it, it, there was really good elements. The cut, the, the cut was good, but I didn't know what to think. I honestly went there. I was like, everything's going to Netflix these days or wherever a streaming service. Am I ever going to see myself on a big screen again in this capacity? So I was like, I, I just got to get down to Tribeca. Let's see what happens. Let's just, you know, we'll take some photos and, and like tell people I'm, I'm still around and, you know, and then the, the screening was so epic. Like you were there, the, 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 the size of the screen, it's on the water. It's a beautiful night, but I'm sitting in the front and I'm, I'm having, I'm seeing that it's changed the cut and it's really, it's like coming, you know, it's, it's the, they, they, they pulled out of it what they needed to, but it's hard to connect like in anything that I've done. Like I can't watch it objectively. I personally can't, but then going to the bathroom after like right before Isabel, some gnarly stuff happened and I'm seeing people's faces and I'm walking by and I'm just like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. So I reported back because I'm sitting in like a pot with all the producers. I'm like, I think people are really digging this. And then the IndieWire review came out and then you, and I swear to God, after that, things just started steamrolling. And then I was getting, you know, outside calls were coming in because people, the you know, there's buzz about the movie. We had the best time in New York, which is wide open, by the way. I came from a lockdown. And I just think this is a very cool thing to be a part of. Yeah. And then the day we left, thinking mission accomplished, I signed, you know, everything, all of these great things happened. I wake up that morning and we sweat, <laughs> we won all these awards and I'm stuck in quarantine in Canada. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, I could have done one more day. I had no Why did I leave? One more night in the hotel, who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah congrats. Yeah, congrats, dude. It's Thanks, just dude. it's a fantastic film. And like, yeah, when I saw the wars came out, I you know, I initially saw it winning um, you know, the founders award. And then I was like, I'm not even gonna read all this. I just did a quick search to see how many times the name would pop up, and I saw it pop up numerous times. I was like, Yep, just what I thought. And then that's when I started yeah. looking at the different categories. Cause I watched a ton of the films and like um there was a lot of good films, but I just thought that this film just came together in a way that did not feel independent it didn't feel like it felt like a major budget it felt like it, it, it everything about it felt major and um the performances in it and then the message it was in the narrative category so it was the message that was the really driving thing for me i was just thinking like man like for somebody who knows nothing about rowing i, I felt really connected to these characters who went like and you can almost kind of replace it with any sport, but I I felt this obsession to want to be great, and then you started you started correlating that with your life, and you start thinking about the iconics, you know, the the legends in every sport who has that same mentality. Kobe Bryant, Kobe, Lamar, I was just gonna say Kobe, and it's Sorry. just and this is crazy how like that message was done in a way that you really don't really see it to this degree. And I, 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 again, it was just phenomenal. I, I do have to ask though, because you, you kind of touched up on a little bit, but like the filming of this, <laughs> well, nothing so about this seemed easy. This seems completely brutal. I want to know locations, conditions, durations yeah. of filming. I, I need to know the entire layout of this because this seemed like it was brutal. I'm so not qualified to talk about this shit because <laughs> I didn't do the stuff that they did, but I was okay. there. So okay. I'll, I'll tell you, like I got there, uh, I think it was day one, but I spent the first like three days in my trailer because it was all water stuff. And then they finally, and then they were all like soaking and shivering and I'm just <laughs> chilling. <laughs> you know, like I'm on a movie set, it's fun and whatever, I'm making friends, eating. And then um, they threw me out on the water just to like, we gotta use him. I mean, we're, you know, he's here. So then I'm, I go out on one of the, the, the boats and I start yelling. And then I, I just see they're all like, the vibe was just very intense. But it's funny that you said that like, it feels bigger budget. A lot of the Canadian crew, which the camera crew that worked with Todd and it could have been like Todd's Midas Touch that, I mean, Todd's amazing. He's like, 
it's going to be a huge deal. Yeah. But these guys really came together and got creative. And I think for a lot of them, it was their first uh, foray into feature films. Maybe they had done shorts. I don't know. Yeah. But it, it was not like like uh, the crew that you're thinking that when you watch it, it, it was very independent. Like this movie yeah. was tiny. It was a yeah. small movie. And, and some of the rigs that these guys made, uh, I mean, if I, how do I get it? I'll send them to your Instagram. Like, yeah. we're posting them. Like, that first opening shot when she's running down the stairs and it goes, camera yeah, goes, yeah. and then she goes into me. That was like a four hour crazy setup of, of the camera was on ropes and they rigged this. Thing. I mean, it was so nuts. But, and then, but as far as like the acting wise, the acting part for me, um, most of my scenes are with Isabel. And the the rush of the movie, like it being in such a hasty, like ferocious pace, and Isabel was she's the sweetest person ever, but she is so was so focused, like she's like a almost an Olympic runner or something. She's sponsored by yeah. Nike. Uh, I mean, she was in shape, and then now she's talked about how what she did to get into shape, but like it always stopped. It felt like when it came to me because I was only. I was in talking scenes, like very, so things had to slow down, but I felt rushed in a good way. I think it helped because the pace of Isabel matched the pace of the movie. And yeah. then it has to stop for me. And I'm like this contrast, you know, to, to everything is this mellow guy who's just trying to, you know, if, if, if I can't chill you out, you're not going to chill out. But I'm just trying to tell you like, you're, you're. I, I don't. I don't know. I got a. I got a little bit of a different interpretation of that. Oh, cool. I, so. So first off, you know, you playing a coach. You know, I'll come back to this question, but just because you're playing a coach, and just because everybody gets online and on Instagram and and preach uh, <laughs> whatever the life quote is for the day, actually being a coach is a real thing. And yeah. I, 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 I've had I have friends who are coaches, and I've seen how their mentality has to shift in order to really, you know take on that job and for you taking on that role i don't think it's just something that you read lines and you put a hat on you're saying you're a coach oh that's so, so so to so to your point i don't feel like when the the scenes with you and isabel was a halt i almost felt like it was like um uh, like uh like a four by four and you're handing a baton off and you're saying keep going keep going because you're like you're fueling her but you're keeping her grounded and i and i and i also like to another question is be what we're seeing on screen is one thing, but I also feel like that same contrast must have been happening while filming between the two of you two because yeah. her performance just it elevates through this film. Like yeah, she yeah. goes to the next level. And it's it's scary because yeah. she gets dangerously good throughout the duration of this film. She really comes into her own. But yeah. like somebody like you who's a veteran, and I feel like being 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 a side of her, I felt like the coaching casting was fantastic. Oh, but then again, I see, I see, I see like with the character, it feels like, again, you're just propelling her in it. Mm. By no means do I feel like it was like a stop, like, why is he here type of thing? Okay, it was that's more. Not I, that's not what I meant. Like, okay. No, I like your take. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, I do feel like, I do feel like it's really important to have your character because uh, one, it's an insight for the viewers to kind of put a perspective about life because she's so motivated. She sees nothing. She's yeah. like, she's a horse with a blinder, a, a bull that sees red. And your character is the one that's creating clarity and direction. And I think, again, talking about the really, uh, the parts of this film that really translates into people's lives, everybody has a Coach Pete. The one person that wants to see them do better and yeah. the one person that steers them on the right in the right track. So like I when, when you <laughs> I like this so much, man. But seriously, it's like when you see your when you see your character, it's like okay, here we go. Here's you get in their focus, and and you and you know there's better things to come every time. And, and again, every every almost every opportunity that she gets is kind of driven through him as well too, to the mm -hmm. point that when we don't see so much of Coach Pete. She embodies the teachings of Coach Pete, putting in that time, 
you need a 10,000 hours, she's doing overtime every second that she gets a chance. And I think that that's why your character is so relatable, but so important, so okay. important. You know what's funny about that? I love this. Uh, I want to know who your coach Pete is, by the way, in your life. But like, <laughs> 10,000 hours. Like you, I was talking to my friend who was actually on the camera department and came to New York uh, with me to, for, for this. We talk about like how one line or small edits in movies can be more, way more impactful than you actually realize. The fact that you were like grabbing on things that I was saying, and I, by no means, and I didn't mean like I'm, why am I there or, or anything like that? That's not what I was saying, but like, um, I think we're sort of saying the same thing. But when I say 10,000 hours and I'm just trying, to, I'm saying it in a way to calm her down, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you know, just as like, a, you've only, you haven't done 10,000 hours, like do 10,000 hours and then come to me crying. Mm -hmm. but like what people grab onto is so interesting in terms of like what gets left in a film and how they get edited in there. Anyway, I just really like that. Like uh, the idea that, you know. Yeah, I mean, because her character has drive, obviously. She's super self-motivated, probably more than any character I've seen in this type of situation yeah. ever. But she still needs motivation because, you know, whether it's the record or whether it's the standard or whether it's the next achievement, you know, from going from novice to varsity, you know, she needs that next thing. And that's where Coach Pete character is so prominent in this because he continues to say, this is the next thing. This is the next thing. Hey, hey, calm down, calm mm -hmm. down, you know, mm -hmm. stay focused and creates the beast that she becomes, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, 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 I really did enjoy the scenes with you two, and I, and I, and I want to know uh, from working with her, you know, how was it, you know, in these settings? Because again, I can't imagine this filming being idealistically fun. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of work and determination yeah. and just drive in this. Not to mention, I know it was cold. So, like, <laughs> the time is of yeah, the essence yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, again, it wasn't for me. Um, except a few times I was in the water and it was raining, but I was fully decked out. But as far as working with her um, and Lauren, who she was yeah. loosely playing, I mean, they were so tight. It was really awesome to watch. Like, they clearly love each other. Like, they're definitely friends, you know? And... Uh, in retrospect, all the things that, you know, it, it, seeing the final cu uh, cut of the movie, you, you sort of, you think back at all the things that, strings that Lauren might have been pulling here and there as, you know, much, not, I'm not so smarter because she always felt like she was smart. I loved her script and, and I, 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 and she definitely made me feel comfortable on, on the set. Um, but when I say there was a rushed, and anyway, Isabel is like, as hard as she was working, and so sweet to everybody, so like, and and then when you think about that and you watch the movie and she's like getting this one tear every single time in the, in the window and Jamie's over here and she's like this and it's just like a laugh and then, a, and then the scene where she's finally talking to Danny Delone, who was also really great, about who the hell she is, like what she had in her while I'm doing scenes and joking around with her and whatever, it's pretty remarkable that she was able to get there. But when I said like the rushing and then it stopped for me is because I come in for a scene, but they've been going all day on the oh, water. Okay. And then like you said it, making these setups because they knew they had to make the movie beautiful. And then they come and she has to like, the whole movie has to like stop for a second and I've got to, come in and try to calm her down and, and in, in, in a weird way calm the style of what's going on down mm. that's sort of what I meant which yeah. I wasn't going to do but like that's I, that energy sort of helped me try to like get in there and she yeah. was so good at letting me in just a little bit but like the, the hamsters you could see the hamster yeah go, yeah go as I'm like, nice. And like she said to me one time, I remember the scene where you're talking about the 10,000 hours, she goes, she's crying at it. And she looked at me and remember, she goes, you're so nice. 
You are kind. She's, you're so kind. And she's crying. And then she wipes up, does it again. Wow. Cries. Same spot. Like it was amazing to see. Yeah. Um, wow. It was pretty great, man. Lauren, her, like Lauren knew what she was doing. Like she had this, she, she lived it, right? So, she, yeah. so it was her job to make people feel what she felt through Isabel and the people around her, you know, like, so the echoey voices and all that. I mean, it's so crazy. It's such a trip. What a bullseye though. Like, cause that's what yeah. she wanted to do. And she did it. Like she really did it. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. It's crazy. Fing fingers crossed that the answer is no here, but I wouldn't be surprised. But was anybody injured during the filming of this? I think, mm, mm, well, no, I don't think anyone, I think uh, a background actor, uh, a light or a heater exploded or something, but she was fine. It wasn't any, like, <laughs> not really, uh, no, no one was really injured. Although that building with the long hallway. Yeah. Was fully haunted, and I'm oh. not like I'm not a ghost person, but like <laughs> I went in there alone one time, and I felt like I was a little kid in my basement running up the stairs because uh, you know in Canada we've got these ding, dank basements. And yeah, whatever. it felt like that. Like there was like a it was haunted. It was dude. It was scary. It was an yeah. Eerie place. Yeah, it would have been a no for me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, do you do you have any experience of your own on the water? Experience on the water? Yeah. Not rowing. My brother rowed, actually. Oh, okay. Rowing. Um, no, I'm not like a water sports fishing. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Same. I, love, I love fishing. I've been wakeboarding before and I've been yeah. water skiing, but I'm more of like a, I was more of like a basketball player, skater. Yeah. Snowboarder, skier, yeah. and that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, I love. I think that rowing is such a beautiful looking sport, but man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. man, so taboo. It's taboo because, like, it's beautiful, but like, it's grueling. Yeah. The training and, um, like you said, I, I, I thought also Lauren did a fantastic job in really making the, the viewers feel but what it takes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is no walk in the park and you know i'd be the first to say like rowing and um i can't think of the other uh sport i think it's called shuffling the one with the the, the puck and you're like scraping so Curling. 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 Oh, yeah, okay yeah two sports i'm like man those look super easy of yeah. course being super ignorant and saying yeah. that you know some time ago but yeah this is definitely one where i'm like yikes eat my words because mm -hmm. not a chance could i ever <laughs> I've never gone curling. Maybe uh, if we ever, if I ever get back to New York, I'll look you up. We'll go curling. I'm with it. I'm with <laughs> it. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely not. <laughs> hey, Rowan. Okay, those Rowan. Things, are you on a, uh, uh, what do you want? A computer, like a laptop or a. Uh, desktop? Yeah. That's, that's about as wide as those boats are. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Squeeze your ass into one of those things and not, and think of not tipping in, you know. Yes. There was some I, dangerous stuff. So sorry, to answer your question, I just remember somebody opened up a dam or something on that river. Uh, yeah, there was nothing awful happened, but there was potentially some like very uh, scary, you know, things that yeah. were avoided for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. To to that point, the scene where uh, Isabel's character Alex shifts position in a boat, I I don't even know what I was feeling at the moment. I, yeah. Final destination. <laughs> I was like, this is not good. Like something is to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so intense and to, like I was like, all yeah. of this seems bad. All of it. So, oh man, I love that final scene too. Yeah. yeah just thinking about it again, it's so beautifully shot. Yeah. Like I said, Todd. Todd Dude, is you fantastic. I mean, you fully took in and digested the movie exactly how it was meant to be. It's so awesome. Like, I'm, I'm happy I'm part of it. But, like, for the people that really had their hands in doing that, it's it's a really amazing to hear. That's why we loved your review so much because it was, like, uh, yeah, I was, like, touched by it. I was, like, he fully got exactly what they were trying to you know, well, 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 thank you. But I mean, 
if you're going to make Thanksgiving dinner, of course I'm going to come over and eat. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, who's your coach, Pete, in your life? I got to think about that, but you know, I I definitely would say it would be like for anybody to definitely keep me grounded. Definitely be like my parents. Like it's not even a question. But like on a on a on a on a level like that, probably one of my college mates that we kind of ran through college together with. That every time we one of us started getting off the rails, the other one's pulling us by you know the 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 collar and saying, "Hey, the goal is to get out of here." (laughs) Don't stay here. So. but yeah, I got I got to think about that more because yeah, no, we, yeah. beyond the, the beyond the grounding element of it too, it's also the part of Alex here who you know this film and the theme of this film is really the driving factor about being obsessed to be great. And while all of that sounds positive, and you know, again from every name. Of, of of iconic and legendary players in any sport, Simone Biles, Kobe, Muhammad Ali, anybody who reached that stardom, who reached that you know that that top tier, it's like if I work hard, I get there, and it seems such like a positive thing. But this film also shows you how obs- obsession can also be a bad yet dangerous thing. Yeah, yeah, and I love. I love the dynamic there of displaying it in that fashion because I did not see it going that way at all. And I was just so blown away. But to you, uh, two questions here. Number one, uh, I would love to hear in your words, how would you really picture what the theme of this film is? And two, when you hear what I just said, do you have any inner obsessions or anything that with the statement I just made, does it ring any inner bells of your own of something that either at a time or even currently where you're just like, I'm just, I'm going to do whatever it takes to do this. A hundred percent. I mean, I feel like choosing at, you know, dropping out of university uh, at 22 to choose to be an actor balls experience. And then I actually said to myself, I remember, uh, like, if I don't, if I, as long as I don't quit, I have not failed doing it. And I always like said my, that to myself and repeated it to myself. And I think in doing this, and yeah, there were highs, and those highs came pretty quickly, but those boosted me up to get to you know Los Angeles, and you've got movie premieres and agents and managers, and everything's going great. Holy shit! I should have done this when I was fifteen, you know, and then bring you up to bring you way back down like up and then still like I mean you contemplate giving up but you don't like and you get I give you sacrifice weddings you sacrifice family stuff you sacrifice not being able to eat you know being super so broke you know uh in trying to do this thing that is just batting you away it's it's mm-hmm. At certain points in my life, it felt, you know, now it feels really good, like, you know, but, and I've had other moments where it's felt really good, but this thing is batting me away so intensely, telling me to fuck off, sorry, telling me to, okay, tell me to fuck off, you know, get out of here, like, we don't want you, and I'm still knocking at the door, it's almost, in my mind, it's psychotic, when I think back on, you know, uh, during COVID, I've been teaching, um, I was, I'm actually supposed to be teaching right now. I, I, signed, <laughs> <laughs> I, I told them I was going to go do this, and then I said, "Come back." It's their final class, and I, I, I it's I love it because I get to talk to them about my experiences in a sense of like of the don't do this and don't do that. Um, yeah, I relate to it in the not giving up, even when you were definitely, you know, there were signs that were saying like you should give this up. Um, but the obsessive work ethic, that is something that doesn't like pull, ring a bell, ring my bell. Like I don't, I don't have that. That is something that I'm, I'm, I'm a spectator of. And speaking of Kobe, there's this Kobe quote. I mean, I'm a crazy basketball fan. Like I love Kobe. I, you know, um, his teammates were, he's uh, Kobe has a, 
I forgot who it was, but he was talking on one of those shows, like open court or whatever, with all the guys. And he said, uh, Kobe's there before practice and he's there yeah. after practice. This guy, you know the quote, this guy is there when practice starts and when practice leaves. Why am I going to pass him the ball? I don't trust him. Why am I going to pass him? <laughs> he's a special, special guy, you know? Yeah. And yeah, like, but he's super athletic and genius head and he's six foot six. And, you know, I mean, he's like a perfect specimen. Like, that kind of drive put in that body battle happen, but that kind of drive, which is also the theme part, part of my view of what the theme is, that type of drive not put in the right body necessarily or the right person. Oh, It'd be very destructive, mm. you know. Um, yeah, I I, 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 I feel like that resonated me, with me so much this time watching the movie. Yeah. way more than the other because the score was even was bad like it's just so much was cleaned up and i was just watching when she does that scene um and 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 thinking even my scenes what she's thinking which i didn't realize at the time but now going back thinking oh my god that's why she's doing this or that she's no that's why she doesn't feel super connected because she's she's she, she's not in the room with me she's thinking with coach b she's thinking ahead yeah. but um when she's when she admits to how obsessive she is to danny that was, to me was what won her the award the crying and that what won her the, i mean it was it was yeah yeah that's i think that's so amazing that you can go back and watch something that you in and completely be a fan of it that i mean and that's not a given folks anybody that's listening because a lot of people say they would not go back and watch anything they are because they're their worst critic and yeah. that's fine you know how you got to go about it however you can but when you can watch something and be a fan of it i think that's just amazing i'll never forget i uh was at a movie screening and i forget the name of the movie right now but i was there and taraji p henson was there and seeing her jump out of her seat yelling out her lines to the screen was the most fantastic thing i've ever seen i was like that's 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 what it's all about right there yeah. that's, that's so cool you know a true performer yep yep it's hard out here for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i love that it song, that was, that's a little that song always in my head by the way yeah, for anything. It comes like first of all, I don't even know if I really like House and Flow, but I damn sure love that theme song. <laughs> yeah. Anytime I get gas, anytime I get gas, I think of that song. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. Mm. So before I let you go, I gotta ask you a one and a half question. Now there's a little bit of a rumor going on out there that there could be a new House of the Dead coming. Is there any truth to this? Because I'm poor. Did you? Okay. House. You you saw my House of the Dead. Of course. You like my House of the Dead. I. So here's Come the on, thing. Like, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I do. I do nothing to ruin my childhood. Yeah. yeah. I do nothing because I, I'll tell you the prime example is when the new Mortal Kombat came out and everybody was talking about this one compared to the other one. I don't care. I yeah. love the old one. And the same thing with Space Jam. I love the old one. I don't yeah. care. House of the Dead was the movie, was the game that was the must, I must do, must watch when I was younger. And I don't care anything else about it. That's okay. it. So okay. I don't I don't go I don't go back with this knowledge and trying yeah, to apply yeah. it back then. All right. I enjoyed all right. it, yeah, and that's yeah. all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's on my IMDB. Um, I would love to do it again because I feel like when I did that, I actually did that. I had just started. I, I had been acting for almost two years when I got Final Destination. And then that led, the day I finished Final Destination, I started House of the Dead. Ah. So things were happening way too fast and I didn't know what I was doing. I would love to go do that again with what I know now, like after the walking, like I was in a zombie thing before Walking Dead. And look I how. I heard of being Walking Dead, but like now yeah. that I see Walking Dead, I would love to go back. I called that production company. I was, I looked it up. I was like, I'm on, are you guys making this movie? Like, I just want to know. And, and if you are like, and you're serious about me being in it, like what kind of yeah. input do you want? 
I, I haven't heard back, so I don't know if that's happening. I hope so. I want to do that. I would love. Yeah. yeah. I mean. The, the the zombie genre in is as a subgenre of horror is so incredibly popular right now yeah. that it makes sense. That's why I I I heard the rumor and I was like, it's got to be true. I mean, because everything else in regards to the, the zombie genre is 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 returning of some caliber. So thriving too, yeah. Yeah, and 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 you know when you think about other things that's very similar to this, Resident Evil, which is just basically doing any and everything anywhere it can animation movie tv series they just wherever it can it's like it's because the demand of the zombie genre is so big so that's my bitch so I you can take like that, that to them <laughs> resident evil the first one on playstation yeah was life-changing for me oh for sure it was so scary i wouldn't play it alone like i was young but like I would not play it alone. And then I have um the new one came out, and I have I, I still play video games. I like I love Sad. Xbox uh, One, and I got a Game Pass. And the Resident Evil came up, the the virtual reality one, which I would not play. Which I would have a heart attack. Like yeah, but it is so good, and it's so scary. They are such geniuses that make these games. Like yeah, it's unreal what they do. I, I could tell you're a video game guy. For Oh, for sure. I mean, to 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 the to to the point of Resident Evil One. I played it. Never played it w without anybody else. Never beat it. I beat all the. I, I I don't know if I beat two, but I beat all the other ones after three. I know that for sure. But yeah. one was so iconic that is the yeah. again the child in me is like I don't know if I can even at this age go back to kind of rechannel those feelings I was having and playing that. Have you looked it up on YouTube? Uh, there's like people playing Speed. it on YouTube and it's like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. One of, my, one of my favorite games too, speaking of uh, Canada, because uh, the developers are in, uh, I think they're in Vancouver, uh, Dead by Daylight, which just released their DLC for uh, uh, Resident Evil. So again, Resident Evil just making money wherever they can and yeah. dead by daylight one of my favorite games out there it's another one of those it's a four player 4v1 uh survival game you're basically put into an environment you gotta cut on five generators and if you if you escape then you're free by the way there's a killer that you don't know where he's at that can attack you on it uh -huh. and they use popular franchises so they got saw resident evil they got chest Texas chainsaw massacre freddy so yeah, that's that's how I spend my uh, downtime. <laughs> Me too. I love it, but I couldn't play that. I, I'm, too, I'm too. I tried to play this Evil Within game. Uh, oh yeah, I couldn't do it. I was like, this is. I'm, I'm, my heart is pounding out of my chest. I can't. I can't yeah. even go to the bathroom in the middle of the night because I feel like you know. Yeah. Um, I'm a giant. Folks, to the folks of, I think that's Bethesda who made that. Yeah. Um. They. It's. It's not even. It's not right to make a no. game to purposely try to do that to people and scare them. It's not no. right. Yeah, <laughs> they bring in somebody. They bring in psychologists to yeah. like. Yeah, so they and they tell them, "Oh, this will really fire people." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So with that being said, too, a lot of success here with the novice. Obviously, now uh, that you're back home and uh, reset. What else are you working on? What's to come? Because I know you're not just sitting sitting on your hands. So I know the, the as you said, the guinea pig wheel must be turning. So yeah, is yeah. something you're in or something you must be brewing up? So anything you can share? I just did a. I literally right a week before I went to Tribeca. I just got home from British Columbia. Um, I did a, a rom com, <laughs> which uh, was a fun. It was so much fun. I, I don't. It doesn't have a title yet. Um, but uh, the 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 holding title is too embarrassing for me to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I did that, and I um, I have a, a series uh, which has been a movie, which is back to a series um, okay. that is pretty close to uh, to getting done, and it's a mockumentary about a guy that wants to be a roadie. That's all I could really say about it. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm that guy. Um, what else do I got cooking? And then, well, I mean, to be honest, like since this happened, the, the floodgates are open, and I guess a lot of a lot of scripts are coming. Like, uh, 
There we go. It wasn't about this this movie. Um, so thanks, Isabel, Lauren, and Todd. <laughs> <laughs> well that's what i love to hear yeah. and uh i definitely will be keeping the eyes glued and you know the seat is always available for you here uh, so any other projects or you just want to talk games and sports like we definitely can do that too no doubt yeah all right cool. and then and then, and then, and then and then once obviously you're out of quarantine and i heard canada's opening back up maybe i take a trip out there and see what it's like there. i love canada and it's been a while so Definitely would love out. to have a reason to come out there. Reach out, man. You have all my information. Right yeah. on, right on. Yeah. Well, folks, this is Jonathan Cherry. Uh, he plays Coach P in the new film, The Novice, which just cleaned up the awards at Tribeca Film Festival this year. Um, although I do not know of its distribution and the Tribeca at Home portal is now closed, it won't be long before it's picked up. So you just want to keep an eye out on their social medias. That way you can see when it'll be available for you to check out. This is a film um, that, again, I, I, I can't stress enough. This is a film that anybody who wants to uh, see a young lady who is determined to be the best at her sport, something that all of us try to do at one point of our life. And even if it ain't sports, your job, your hobbies, whatever it may be, you're going to see the ups and downs of her journey into pursuing that. And it's just fantastic. The score, the cinematography, the performances, it just comes together. And it's a roller coaster. So you don't want to miss out on it. Yeah, so, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So until then, folks, definitely jump in the comments. Let us know your thoughts about it once you do check it out. And uh, keep an eye out for Jonathan as he has, as he said, some projects brewing up. And the floodgates have opened because, again, when, when when you do something good, then everybody wants a piece of you. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's so that's how that works. Is this is this shame, shameless? I'm I'm terrible with the social media, but I am posting everything on my Instagram. Right on, and that I'll have that in the description below for you folks. So, yeah. but yes, as always, folks, thank you so much for tuning in today, and stick around for more interviews and reviews very soon. Well, thanks, man.